but we're not in a school to give diplomas. We're in a school to help the graduates get jobs. He told his family as he was dying, be brave. So we keep that as a, as a parang slogan. Your parents are wealthy. So how do you stay down to earth? Paano kayo maapak sa lupa? My parents, of course, they were well off. But they taught us to live relatively simple lives. No? And, and, and the same for uh, my wife Ging's parents. No? Gigi is such an unusual name from Aurelio uh, mm. the Third. My grandfather and my father used up all the nicknames now for Aurelio. <laughs> So I had the second name, Luis, which became Luigi, then became Gigi. Every now and then, somebody would ask, who's going to take you out? Mm -hmm. They give my name, and then the parents would say, okay. <laughs> and then when I think, I'm a girl. As a former president and CEO of one of the country's leading banks, he has left a legacy of prioritizing people before profit. Today, more than a decade after his retirement from the banking industry, he has only expanded his interests and reach as an environmental advocate, a philanthropist, and educator. What motivates Far Eastern University Chairman Aurelio Gigi Montinola III? Find out here only on Usapang Pilionario. I read that you took the position out of a sense of duty to your mother. Yes. Of course, that has changed in the last decade. Has it? Well, it's happily been productive. They haven't fired me yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, when, we, when I think about it, it was time to do something different with my life. And I felt that in the education field, I could uh, contribute. A uh, little bit of background, long time ago, I was with Alliance Francaise as president, mm -hmm. international school as trustee, uh, Harvard Business School as advisor, and then I've been on the board of PBED, Philippine Business for Education, since it, as vice chairman, since its inception in, um, when was that, 2006. Mm -hmm. So it became natural to come in, and, mm -hmm. and um, I've been very, happy. I, I basically say that it's business mentorship for professional academics. No? Mm -hmm. And um, we've increased enrollment, uh, we, we've uh, improved the quality of our education, um, we've, uh, and, then, and then we've also um, been able to rebrand and effectively be more uh, powerful. And the best part, we've done very well both in the K-12 to growth times and then the pandemic uh, times. So, from a sense of duty, what would you call it now? Uh, I've liked it every year much better, so I don't really know. Uh, it's a mission uh, now. Yeah, and I feel I'm contributing. So, I am using my professional manager management skills mm -hmm. as a banker and instilling it into FEU. So we've started with uh, aspirations, so we have a strategic plan. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned earlier, we work with uh, professionals. We have some very good professionals led by our president, Dr. Michael Alba. Mm -hmm. And then we like to be on a can-do and continuous improvement mode. Mm -hmm. So on the education side, we've invested in technology. Uh, we have really improved our Wi-Fi. We have a platform called Canvas, which is used by Stanford and Harvard. We accidentally did this two years before the pandemic. So when the pandemic came, uh, we were ready. No? And mm -hmm. so that really helped us on the, on the, during the pandemic because we could function um, online. No? Um, the other things I think about is that I've simplified it. Um, I, it. For the students, it's a value a college experience. The experience mm -hmm. is important because we always have um, nice campuses, miss sports.
culture. The value is also very is, is original because it's uh, inclusive. We have open admissions, so, so we accept almost anyone and then we see whether they can meet our standards. And no we entrance exams? We have entrance exams, but the, the um, uh, admission level is very low. So practically anyone can get in. Uh, we, we like working with uh, people of, uh, for lack of a better term, um, lesser economic means, no? probably the C, the C market, uh, a little bit of the D in, in Roosevelt, and then giving them the value experience, which is to improve them as uh, students. And aside from the usual uh, content content, we like to talk about outcomes learning. So we have a what, it, what is that? We have a código that it's um, uh, you know digital learning, uh, effective communication, critical thinking. Mm -hmm. So we're basic because today you can you can Basically, Google anything. Yeah, you'll yeah. get you'll get the answer in mm -hmm. you know whatever seconds. seconds <laughs> no? So we, we, we like to prepare the person. Uh, for a future experience. No, I remember when I came in, uh, my one of my first uh, statements was, mm. uh, you know, we're in a school, but we're not in a school to give diplomas. We're in a school to help the graduates get jobs. So that's the student side, and, and we've done reasonably well. Mm -hmm. And then on the employee side, this is also learning from my BPI experience, I use the phrase meaningful careers. So you can come in, you can work with us, you can move your way up. Um, There's a path to... Y yes, um, and, and, and today we have a um, system where we have uh, significant uh, internal promotions, but we also hire uh, specialists for specialist positions. And so once it, and then the best part is if it blends. If it blends, you know, the usual thing, yung parang, management style, working together. I've always believed that, uh, just as an example, first five is always better than superstar CEO. Because it's a team, eh? mm -hmm. So whoever we bring in, and then of course, once it gets to first five, you make it first 10. After it's first 10, you make it first, you know, something like that, no? But you get all the people more or less on the same page. Mm -hmm. And, and um, if they believe in the mission, then, then you have a big um, advantage. And of course, they have to work as a team. The good part is we concentrate on the education rather than on the business of education. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'd like to follow up on that because uh, I suppose the conventional thinking is there's no money here. You're, you're throwing it away, uh, you're you know, throwing good money. Uh, if you go into education? Well, my grandfather had the original idea. And his original idea was secular, so any denomination, uh, inclusive, mm -hmm. relatively open admissions, and for profit. Okay, and the reason he felt that it should be for profit is that shareholders who see that the company are, is doing well, will reinvest in the, in the company. You know? mm -hmm. So today we have a good sharing because there's roughly a dividend policy of about 40%, but we really spend the 60% to, to improve our buildings, campuses. Every year we're constructing something new. Every year we're investing in technology. So uh, there is money to be made in education, in quality education. Yes, yes, yes. The, I mean, I mean. Even it, if you say you're not really in education for business. Yes. That's, well, well, what, what happens? Said. What happens is that, um, like anything else in this world, you have to run the school well. Um, fortunately, we're at the middle level in terms of uh, pricing, and rather than get squeezed in the middle, we 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 say. No, we're cheaper than the, the best schools. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and with more quality than the regular schools. Mm -hmm. so, so we've turned a disadvantage into an advantage, and, mm -hmm. and that has helped us keep going, you know, because, and then we think long term. We are gathered this morning for our annual Founders Wreath Laying Ceremony. It was at FEU where we performed the best. We continue to be ranked in the top six in the quote, most preferred schools, unquote, for employability in the Job Street survey. We learned to be brave in the UAAP season 78. Let us continue to be brave. It's so sad because so many private schools are closing now, no? Yes. Because of economic And uh, here you are expanding. Difficult. Yes, we're expanding, yeah. Were you ever at risk during the pandemic time? Not really. Again, thanks to our very professional team, we were ahead of the game um, with regards to the learning platform. Mm -hmm. uh, second, we had invested in technology, you know? so something as simple as saying we just wanted very good Wi-Fi in the campus, you know, the practical side when the pandemic started where people were saying, eh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, pero kawawa bagsak naman yung studyante. Oh. Yeah, bagsak. Or the teacher kawawa has yung, to kawawa purchase. Yung studyante kasi wala namang Wi-Fi sa bahay niya. Hmm. So we did many things like, oh, we, we just make sure our library is super Wi-Fi so that the people who don't want to do Wi-Fi hmm. at home just come there. It's, 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 it, these are all small things, big things. but. Well, I mean, you know, they, matter. they made the difference. Yeah, and then we've learned to be resilient. You know, in in my previous career, I went through four major banking crises. So you just have to be, I mean, you just have to adjust and see what you can do and stay professional. And, and but your family almost sold FEU, right? There was a time when they wanted to get out no, of well, it. Well, let, let me let me clarify that my grandfather had three uh, surviving children okay. okay two sons and my daughter and, and a daughter was my mom mm -hmm. and both of them died in 1982 so they continued for a while and then in 1989 the two families felt that it was too difficult to be in education. Remember also the 80s. 80s was really magulo. High inflation, maraming student strikes, mm -hmm. it, was, mm -hmm. it was really magulo. So it was very mm -hmm. difficult then. So, so they, they um, um, decided to sell. And fortunately, my father saw that my mother really liked the institution. So they put together a group to to buy in, and then my mom, naman, when she came in, dalawa lang ang marching directions niya. Number one, get a professional academic and make sure all the campuses are clean. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it made a difference. <laughs> so, so, so that's been, and then, uh, of course, we, we were able to slowly, you know, and in, the, in Manila, there are 10 buildings. So if we renovate one a year, by the tenth year, the first one's major old, diba? Mm -hmm. So, but but we were always committed to that, and the people, plenty of green. Uh, you know, if if you ever go to Manila, it's a beautiful campus. You wouldn't expect it in Menjola, na napakagulo. Yes. My father was the founder of FEU, and his name was Nicanor Reyes. He was a much loved person, not only by his family but also by all of those whom he worked with. My grandmother, Lola Kayang, was supposed to have considered him her jewel. He was the only one in the family who aspired to study abroad. My father lived in those days of honor and integrity, in the Halshon days of peacetime Manila. Um, did you ever meet your maternal grandfather? No. He, 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 that's a major sad story because he was the first to start the school in 1928 and he was always one who was very connected and had done many things. Some people even say that the two who started accounting in the Philippines mm -hmm. were Wash Sisip and him. Okay. Then the war came. The 
war was actually over already. And, and there were these last few days where the Japanese, uh, you know, were supposedly supposed to get out, but they, they killed quite a few people. And Medio Malas Chamba there on, on who got killed. And so his family uh, died. But the parting words, which is part of our slogan, is that he told his family as he was dying, be brave. So we keep that as a, as a parang slogan, mm -hmm. like you, you have to fight hard if mm -hmm. you're in the pandemic, you be brave. Ah, gonna, gonna. Which your mother took to heart when the business, uh, yes. when the school yes. Yes. would yes. have been lost to the family. Yes. Be brave were the last words that my grandfather uh, said to my mother when their whole family was massacred in 1945 as the Japanese were retreating. And what it suggests is that in times of difficulty and loss, what's important is the ability to bounce back. Nagtampo ba ang tatay mo? No, I'm very... I'm, one of the things I appreciate the most he allowed me to go into a professional career and in fact he was always supportive so that's the number one thing i owe to him you know? and uh, turned out i like banking uh, well i had okay. i always had the personal mantra if you focus on the customers and the people the business results will follow you were uh once uh, your name was being mentioned as a successor to Saite Tanko. Yes. Uh, it was offered to you, the position? No, no. I was rumored to be. Hanggang rumor lang. They really believed in the philosophy, so we've been able to to keep it that way. And um, fortunately, we've been able to, as I said earlier, not only improve the academic and student experience, but also to grow. So, so we, we were originally about three campuses, um, and and you know I think around the time when I got in, and now we're at ten campuses and. We have three joint ventures, the most prominent of which is we were invited by the Brunei government to set up a nursing school. So we have a nursing school in Brunei. In Brunei? Yeah. How old is that? It's new. It's only a year ago. It's small, mm -hmm. but it's still this business of um, uh, helping. You know, if we're going to go into ASEAN, we sort of walk before we run. Mm -hmm. They've been good. And uh, well, as you know, nursing is the big uh, industry worldwide. Mm -hmm. How about your paternal grandfather who, who was a banker? Was that the reason why? Were you groomed to be in, in banking? No. It's accidental. You know, you come out of college or graduate school, you accept the first job that accepts you. <laughs> so it turned out that it was banking and then I never really knew that I would like banking. It was supposed to be a learning experience because mm -hmm. parang, you know, the, the, the drill before was uh, college, two years work, two years grad school, two to five years of work with another company just mm -hmm. to learn how it is outside. And then you enter family business. Then you go back, use that experience to grow to the family, family business. But then so you were going to Amon Trading? After that was the plan. originally, originally, I, my my 
my name, Aurelio, is the yeah. same as my Lolo and my dad, and I have the, the third. No? So that was the original idea. But many things happened, uh, primary of which was martial law. So I came back to Manila around 80. Mm -hmm. And I remember this was the, the, the very bad economic times. Mm -hmm. So I was with City for two years, and then BPI called. I said, oh, I guess okay, I'm going to go there. I'll be there for about two years, and I stayed for 30. So, <laughs> so <laughs> tampo bang tatay mo? No, I'm very, I'm, one of the things I appreciate the most, he allowed me to go into a professional career. And in fact, he was always supportive. So, you know, that's the number one thing I owe to him. You know? mm -hmm. and, um, Turned out I like banking. Uh, Why? Well, you know, what it's, was it's it, fun. What was appealing uh, about um, banking? The industry, per se, it's finance, banking is, is, is important. But I think in the end, I like dealing with um, customers. Mm -hmm. Parang put in this customer service viewpoint. I like the innovations at uh, BPI. I liked working with a lot of people, visiting brands. Which is really a result of your uh, work there. I understand yeah. that BPI, before you came in, or, uh, yeah, was, you know, very uh, upmarket, yes. really um, social lang, and you widened the customer base. Yes, yes, yes. Well, go back again to the economic times for the Philippines. There were very difficult years in the 70s, the 80s, the even the 90s, but there's one crisis per... Right. per Political uh, instability as well. So when I came in, uh, as others had started, I felt that we should go down market. I helped push the SME, small and medium enterprises, particularly in the provinces. And that was the first stage. And then the second stage, I... I was around when we started uh, microfinance. No? Today it's called Banco. Like any businesses, it has its ups and downs, but now it's doing, doing uh, well. No? The, the, the side comment also, uh, I enjoyed working with the industry. Okay, in the 90s, I was with the Chamber of Thrift Banks when we were able to pass the Thrift Bank Act. And then in 2000, uh, I eventually became the BAP president. Mm -hmm. And my big learning there is really better to work well with your competitors. Mm -hmm. There's the term that they use now today to co-opt. And then the regulator. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, from a personal point of view, I like thinking that I help the keep the banking safe, uh, the banking industry safe, and the during two crises, mm -hmm. the '96 crisis and the 2008, the Asian uh, crisis, uh, Asian crisis, and then and then there was that financial, there was that financial mm -hmm. crisis the, in 2008. But I remember the banks were all in trouble. You know? mm -hmm. the, the, there were one or two people were scared that some would close mm -hmm. down. You know? mm -hmm. So it was. The relationship that you built among banks, the trust and the yeah as yeah, a yeah yeah yeah. Alam mo alam mo naman ako. I'm easy to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so no, but when you like work how when you say you're easy to deal with, meaning um, you see anybody, you're a, you're approachable. The, the yeah, door is always bit. But open. I think in general, the, the approach is. Um, Cooperate where there's common interest, mm -hmm. and compete where you know you have to do your you have to compete also the mm -hmm. job and, and and obviously during my time, I felt good that at least to my mind, BPI was the leader. And BPI was number one when you left. Well, in not in anymore. <laughs> no, 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 no. It will be, it will be because I mean, in, in other words, there are different people with different approaches. No. One bank likes size, mm -hmm. and we like, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, uh, quality. We're, we're always a little bit tighter on credit. So the expansion was not really to be big, but rather to service 
customers to service your growing uh, well I had business. I always had the personal mantra if you focus on the customers and the people the business results will follow you mentioned that you during uh, your time in banking there must have been four major crises that erupted how do you I mean, how do you deal, how do you confront these challenges that, you know, well, can first, be very... Yeah, first you have to realize that there's a crisis, uh -huh. and then second, after that, you stick to the, uh, I call it the knitting, you stay in the center. You know, there, there was a, somebody asked me in the 2008 crisis, why did BPI... Why was BPI not uh, involved in Lehman? Because there were a lot of other mm -hmm. banks who got it. Right. So I made a joke because I'm a golfer. I said, well, simple. Keep it in the fairway. Keep <laughs> the ball in the fairway. Yeah. Meaning don't? Just stay, you know, within uh, as long as you stay in the, in the, you know, the central, uh, you know, it's like a road, right? There's two sides of the road. If you stay in the middle of the road, you Conservative. will. Conservative. Yeah, yeah. Be conservative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there ever a time, do you get rattled? How do you not get rattled? Because, you know, um, you're, you're uh, looking after people's money. Yes. So. Well, you, that's why you have to stick to the mission. You know, banking is all about trust and confidence. That's more than 50% of the game. And uh, what you do is you just talk to your people. You're, you know, sort of taking care of them. You have to communicate a little bit more. Uh, and what I was very surprised at during those two or three crises, there are a lot of people who like you for being conservative. Because in the non-crisis, we're always we're always criticized, de ba? Ang hina hina ng BPI, masadong conservative, de ba? So it it's but as we say, we have a we have a plan, and we like the well. In fairness, we really like the innovation. BPI is always at the first forefront of mga technical technological innovation. Was Retirement mandatory, or you felt you had already you no, wanted retirement, to retirement was mandatory uh, at 60 in BPI. I was extended two years to help look for a successor. Mm -hmm. um, so I retired at 62, and then uh, I was asked to come here. You were uh, once uh, your name was being mentioned as a successor to Saite Tanko. Yes. Uh, it was offered to you, the position? No, no. I was rumored to be. Hanggang rumor lang. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and, then, and then I knew that it was a serious uh, um, rumor. But then the good news is that the president, because me, I'm, I'm, I'm a practical person. Mm -hmm. I'm a very good commercial banker. Mm -hmm. But I am not uh, a central banker. Because central bank. What's, what's the difference? Why? No, you have to be you have to be good in e e economics, right? Ideally, you'll be good in treasury. And, and you're not. No, that's not my forte. Meaning my, my it's forte. not your forte. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I cannot. You, the macro. You mean the, yeah, the macro economics? Yeah. I, I, I cannot imagine myself uh, focusing on the inflation rate and Interest the exchange rate, rate every day. I mean, it's not, it's not, that's it's not, not me. It's not your DNA. Yeah, and fortunately, the president picked well because obviously, Sai was an excellent uh, um, central bank head. Uh, it was before she, before uh, Tetanko was appointed, your name was being yes. floated. Yes. And now it's being floated again, right? For? MB, Monetary Board. You know, MB, well, first of all, banking today is in good shape and in good hands. Mm -hmm. The MB is a full-time position. Right now, I am semi-retired, and I feel I can contribute much more in the education field. No? What would you consider your biggest challenge in, in banking? 
2008 Look. financial crisis because that one was that everything you thought of suddenly was not there. You always think of banks as safe and suddenly the riskiest ones were... The big ones. The big ones, yeah. But we, using the BAP and using Governor Sai, we were able to put a small group of people together to fashion a plan which would not make Gulu the the exchange rate at the time. Mm -hmm. And and that's the part I'm also quietly proud. Because I had to talk individually to all, in, including the foreign banks. And we got 98% uh, acceptance. And we did this all quietly. How did you do it? How? Call them up, talk to them. Say, oh, you have to help the country. I mean, right? And then uh, it worked out. I mean, I was Otherwise, very what would have happened if there well, was... Well, the problem in any crisis is that you don't want the crisis to get worse. Right? Mm -hmm. There are certain things that you do. The ones who want it to get better, you want to feel more positive. Mm -hmm. And the ones who, who don't like it, they're more negative. And then they do things to make it even more negative. Mm -hmm. So it's always a confidence. Uh, well, you see all of this, uh, whatever, central bankers, bankers, etc. They're always trying to tell you, no, no, it will pass. I mean, it, it's a confidence thing also, but whether the people believe in you or not. It's another matter. Yeah, fortunately. So it's the, about shoring up confidence, even if, because at that time it was a pre perception problem, would you say? Not well, too. it was both, but the, I mean, there were, there were, well, some people felt that banks were no longer safe to be in. And then in the country, uh, w what I remember is that, uh, you know, all this negative talk, et cetera, et cetera. And then the, w one of the primary uh, measures of the confidence of the country, of course, there are also exchange uh, uh, issues, has been the volatility of the exchange rate. And um, anyway, for whatever it was. And it, 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 it worked out, no? And, and um, it, so it, it, it's a nice thing to, to, have to think, yeah. So it's part of like biggest challenge, but at the same time, biggest satisfaction that we were able to quietly do all of these things, because mm -hmm. no? we never really talked about it. This was when you were BAP, BAP president. president. Yeah. Otherwise, they won't listen to me. <laughs> And as you said, BPI uh, was solid. I mean, you didn't yeah, but, have but, that much. But, but that's what I'm saying. Common interest yeah. is always better than uh, personal interest. Mm -hmm. Because, um, of course, we had to talk to our you know, competitors and our friends, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, mm -hmm. and it worked out. I think if I were to characterize Gigi's leadership of BPI, I think it's marked by a very deliberate move towards greater people sensitivity. He cared much for the people in the organization. He cared much for our customers. His greatest contribution is putting a human face in BPI. He resurrects careers. I should know. I am among those he gave a second chance. One of the statements I make regarding my banking style is that I try to be helpful, but stay careful and circumspect. That was my comment long time ago. I don't have a schedule, I get scheduled. <laughs> right? And now it's like uh, I try to work half a day long every day and I choose what I like. Temper. Do you ever, you know, blow your top? You, you seem to be so. <laughs> Only when I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have a temper. I don't think so. How do Once you stay cool? Well, th cool? thankfully, it's my nature. 
di ba? To look at things over a broader period. So I, I get less excited both ways. You know, when things are really, really, really nice and then when also things are bad. So it's just, I don't know, personal, I guess. You don't panic easily. I mean, you don't, yeah. Well, like everybody else, when there's a real problem, you get, well, first concerned and then worried and third, possibly scared. Mm -hmm. But you have to stay cool so you can think through what your next step is. And that naman, you know, I including the possibility that your next step is do nothing, right? <laughs> Sometimes it's like that. So, I, I mean, I've been fortunate that... Uh, I think it's a banker in you, no? Yeah, yeah. I, my my, my, my favorite, well, not favorite, but one of the statements I make regarding my banking style is that I try to be helpful but stay careful and circumspect. Okay. Yeah. So that's basically what it is. Can you because elaborate the, on that? Helpful? No, helpful, you try to help the customers, yeah. you try okay. to help your people. The careful, you have to be credit careful. Mm -hmm. And you have to decide who you want to deal with. Mm -hmm. right? And in the circumspect, you have to be, I, I just, Quiet. You don't want to tell the whole world mm. what you know, and 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 uh, and uh, so 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 people. A lot of people would tell me, including Natin Banki, tell me confidential things because they know I won't talk. Do you have any favorite banker? Yeah, Saite Tanko. Oh, why? He did the super job. Why? Ah, uh, he proved that central, I mean, there were other people also, because I knew also the, the, the previous central bankers, no? But he did very well during his time, uh, kept everything steady. Anyone you idolize? Well, my boss, okay, the, Javier Loinas, but he came from a different era, and uh, he was very principled, he was very tough, so some people, liked him and other people didn't like him but he really knew his banking so and what did you pick up from him oh lots of things you you he stays very principled uh, he of course his credit skills were good mm -hmm. uh, he was quite open parang uh, american in telling you to your face whether you were good or bad, right? which is also good. He was very blunt. Blunt is the correct term, you know, and um, and uh, but and then and then this is the other nice part. M many people would either not like the or sorry, yeah. he did not necessarily like uh, some people, but all these people uh, admitted that he rated them fairly. Was he ever very blunt with you? Uh, yes, but I... I <clears throat> one of my lucky characteristics is that I'm able to work with difficult people. And so because of that, you have a bit of an edge, right? And how so? Why so? You charm them? How? No, no. How? You're, or, but hindi ka balat si Buyas. You can take yeah, criticism. Yeah, yeah. So I guess you're charming kasi. You said, no, what is it? You said, your lucky skill is that you can work with difficult people. Yeah, and simple people also. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's lucky. It's, it's an innate thing. It's in you. Well, maybe I'm lucky because, I mean, basically, I, I don't think seriously that anyone plans to be a certain place, no? Using your terms, if you overthink it, it gets worse. Mm -hmm. So it's a natural reaction with many people. And, you know, some people will like you, some people won't, mm -hmm. won't really like you as much. But mm -hmm. life goes on. Mm -hmm. Um, in the, in uh, the education sector, I guess you deal with uh, more 
ordinary people than in banking. Yes. And yes. how has that been for you? It's good. Because, because you know the Philippines. That's what we need. We, we need good products for the majority of people. And sadly, either you count it in the real numbers or you count it in the self-perceived uh, mm. poverty. Ang taas eh, di ba? So what they think about and what they do, um, if, if you can somehow relate to them, and, 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 and everybody thinks aspirationally. Mm -hmm. So if they can go to the FU, they can get this value education, they can dream higher. Those, those, are, those mm -hmm. are good stuff. Mm -hmm. How would you compare the state of education when you, you know, um, became chairman and today? The state of education in the country, not just... Well, FU. it's sad because uh, 2012, 2013, we probably were average in the world. But the thought was, how can we get better? Mm -hmm. and, and, and people thought that one of the solutions was K-12 to because people weren't learning enough in 10 years and the global standard was 12. And uh, that happened. Uh, and then the pandemic happened. And now we get all of these um, uh, tests or international surveys which show that we have really fallen and... Uh, we have regressed. Oh, significantly. You're not a believer in it. No, no, we're, we're, we're precisely a believer in it. Okay. But I'm, I'm told that... Um, the political... Not even political. M m many people, okay. including parents, are okay. questioning, right. why do I need an extra two years if I can't get a better job? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean it is. now, the saddest yeah. part is that uh, basic lang yan, diba? reading, writing, math, science. Remember when we, well, I remember when I was a kid, all of this business about the Philippines being one of the most literate countries in the world. Diba? And, 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 and now you have this thing where some people say, oh, grade five and grade niya, pero in skill level niya, grade three lang. Given this situation, you have managed FEU to to go against yes. the curve, I mean, the down, the, uh, the fall. Well, I don't think we really compare diba, against everybody else. What we do is, as I said earlier, parang can do end continuous improvement mode. So it's like any uh, good product in, in, in another industry. Mm -hmm. Once people know you, they want to come to you, they get a good experience, you know, things like that. No? So it's all evolutionary. But the best part is we feel good because all of these, shall we say, regular students are able to get a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We always say, ideally, they get a job, which is twice the minimum wage. What prompted that decision to acquire Roosevelt and to, uh, to go into K-12? to well, the sellers wanted to sell, okay. so we were, you were approached. approached. Yes, and then uh, it turned out there were lots of things in common because they were formed in 1933 and we were formed in 1928. Mm -hmm. And absolutely coincidentally, their school colors were green and gold. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the same as us. But they're mostly, it's called Roosevelt College, but they're mostly basic ed. So it was also good because it taught us how a, a, a basic ed with a significant number of students uh, could work as an institution and also at a lower price value because they're, they're less than one half of the tuition in FEU Maine. So, so in a way, this is really giving back, you know, access to education is yes. so important in moving the country forward. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. I, I think in all countries in the world, uh, education is critical. Mm -hmm. And in many countries of the world, the budget for education is quite significant. Uh, you know, so, so hopefully that will continue. But they have to work on the skills. I mean, you know, a classroom is nice, but what do you do with the classroom after? Mm -hmm. the, the, the pay, they have increased the pay for the teachers, 
it's one of the better paying jobs now. That's generally good, but then you need to train the teachers also mm -hmm. to, to, to contribute the, you know, to the quality. You know. So you do that? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And it comes at a time also when many conglomerates or tycoons have taken a look at education. Yes. I mean, there's NU, yes. there's uh, the Del Rosario. FINMA. Yeah, FINMA. Yeah. Ayala, so, Mapua. Yeah. Okay, so you were ahead. Would you say? No, man, you're around <laughs> the same. No, but, but I always like to say this uh, mm -hmm. the more the merrier. Because in the final analysis, the market share of any school in the Philippines. If you can be more than two percent, malaki niyan, di ba one percent? So the more the merrier. It's better for the country. Mm. It's like if you're the only restaurant in a place, hindi ka mabubuhay. Tama. But if a lot of good restaurants yeah. open up around you, everybody, including you, uh, get better. No? But would you say that maybe you started the trend because they looked at you, took a look at you, and saw what you were doing, the difference that you were making? and emboldened others to do the same? Well, or were you just in the same thinking? I mean, did you ever talk about it with your, you know? Well, they, they all entered for different reasons, and they all felt that entering the space was good. I, I don't think we really talked about it. Uh, we, you know, were effectively paddling our canoe, but getting better <laughs> at it, right? And then we see, but there's a lot of interest about that Philippine business for education that's mm -hmm. been already 15 years. They, 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 mm -hmm. they lobby for some good things. Um, mm -hmm. all, the, all the schools do different things. No? And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, I'm hoping for the country that there is an education uh, resurgence. No? Renaissance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then Renaissance. what I always say, kailangan, basic lang yan. Eh. Don't have too many subjects, diba? Reading, writing, math, science. If all you do is every day you're supposed to do that. Kasi foundation rin yan eh. Mm -hmm. If you don't get that right, by the time they reach high school or college, mm -hmm. you need a lot of remedial uh, mm -hmm. learning. You think this is now where you want to focus all your energies? Well, maybe the way I'm going to summarize it is that I went 30 years in a professional career in one field, which was banking. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in a give back stage. So the most uh, prominent is the education. Mm -hmm. But I also helped out in the environment because I was right. with WWF. Yeah. And then, you have so many uh, involved, civic uh, involvements. Go ahead. And then, and then now on the social, which is the Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation. Mm -hmm. So really, that, that, those are the two that I'm... Well, w what I do mm -hmm. consciously is I rotate. So I stay a few years in one mm -hmm. and then rotate. No? So I'm already out of WWF. But I'm into mm -hmm. Ramon Magsaysay. Um, so, you know. Now going back to education, um, your you've, uh, your family has named the scholarship uh, in memory of your father, IES. Can you? Uh, uh, yeah. When I when I was also correct, yeah. but when I was yeah, that's a you know that's a long time ago. But the long and short of it is mm -hmm. that my father arranged for the three of us, myself, my brother, and my sister, to travel, uh, to study junior year abroad, junior college year abroad in a school called Institute of European Studies. Oh, okay. So we, so we went there and, you know, it obviously opened our eyes. You know, you're 20 years old and you can do anything you like. And Europe, Europe is always more equal, yes. right? Rather than, for example, the U.S. Mm -hmm. So we had super experiences there. So I just felt that, uh, I would help out, uh, you know, and then we did it. We, we did it uh, one time, you know, and it was effectively to help students take summer uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, so this was a long time ago, not this scholarship. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and how many have benefited? How many oh, it's two, it was two a year uh, for. 
was it five years? Yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. But then for you, it was really, you know, you're young and you oh, see the world. Oh, it changed my life. It changed my life. How? Because, how? because um, you know, this openness to, to, well, number one, to see other cultures, mm -hmm. language, travel, take care of yourself, right? In those days, walang internet or cell phone, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a problem, you have to handle it on your own, mm -hmm. right? But that was a very good uh, learning uh, experience, mm -hmm. and, and I realized that I fitted very well, or I like lots of things which are European. Mm -hmm. This was in uh, uh, France. France. I was in yeah. In Paris. I I was in a place called uh, Nantes, and then Paris. This was in 1970, something like that. 1971. So this accounts also for the French connection. Yes, that started it no? mm -hmm. because um, uh, and 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 then the, the other related thing is it converted me from although this went on over a time, particularly through Banghe, from introvert to extrovert. Really? Yeah, because before you know you're so, and then anyway that. The, how so? How? Because you were exposed to. Yeah. I mean, you have no, to I mean, you, you, but you have to relate. You, you cannot yeah. get anywhere without socializing yeah. and communicating and doing it on your own, mm -hmm. right? So from there, I, some of, I, I, I went to Citibank and then I worked in Pakistan and then there were some French people who were there. So that's the second stage. And then some of the French people came back to Manila, and then uh, so I, I met them here again. And then one thing led to another. So I did Alliance Francaise. I, w I did co-chairman of the Philippine France Business Council. And then, and then lately, the, the, what they call it, met or master or head of the commandery de Bordeaux, which is basically wine. How's your French? Decent. <laughs> so it's not because of your father's influence, but really also your love for. No, we're the ones who French. influenced my father. I'm the, the one who influenced our father. Ba? Yeah, because Baliktad, my oh. father decided, well, a little bit of background. My mom was Alliance Francaise president also. But my dad went to France to learn French at the age of 60. But he really used it as escapo. <laughs> <laughs> Go there and then, you know. Because of you. Well, I wouldn't say because of me, but he, 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 they always liked Europe, so mm -hmm. they always liked Paris, so, mm -hmm. so there was no relationship with him. Maybe, maybe in a sense that's also, it's also baliktad, no? because, uh, because they really, my parents really liked Europe, France, uh, we got to like it. This is probably your indulgence, mm -hmm. we can say, golf and wine. Mm -hmm. Or uh, all things French. Yeah, right. Neither mind. But but <laughs> I think right now th that those are the two because I like nice lunches and dinners. Right? Um, I got a lot of experience when I was with this commander de Bordeaux. Uh, so that's one. And then the golf, of course, is combination exercise, peaceful scenery. You right? could you see a lot of the green. Uh, relaxing social relax socializing with friends so. you once said na before uh, when you were in BPI you were scheduled parang you had no say I mean you had I guess back-to-back yeah. -back meetings and, yeah. and now that you're semi-retired you pursue what you want to do it's really yes. your your call yes yeah that was my comment long time ago. I don't have a schedule. I get scheduled. <laughs> right? And ngayon, it's like uh, I try to work half a day lang every day and I choose what I like. So I exercise in the morning, three mm -hmm. days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, Golf? No, no, no. Oh, well. There's a trainer who comes and oh. then, and then, uh, so that, that, yeah, I, I mean, you know, you just exercise. Okay. And then, um, as I mentioned, and then, and then it's three days on site, two days off site. So my general plan. The off site is oh, like everybody else. Viber, Viber, WhatsApp, <laughs> WhatsApp. <laughs> I mean, what else? Because what do you do? 
you attend your these ano na Ramon Magsaysay and other. well you know on, on the world today everybody's vibing you and etc uh, etc et no, but you can but you can I am I I skip because I don't answer a lot of things you know like uh, anyway like what huh? <laughs> Like greeting people, happy birthday. <laughs> You'll be surprised at how much time that takes. Oh my God! Diba? Is there anything else left in your bucket list? In, you know, what, what else do you want to pursue? Or would you say you've pretty well, much I'm, achieved what you set out to do in life? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not the type of person who, I mean, I, I, I think through certain things and where I want to go and I, I don't say that I, this is this mountain to climb. I just sort of experience whatever I'm doing and try to make it better. So you're in it, the moment guy. Uh, more or less. Yeah. But anyway, if it's if it's professionally, if mm -hmm. I can contribute more to the education mission of the country, I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. But if you're asking me one last thing, Antarctica trip with my kids. While, I'm, while I can still do it. Yeah. I mean, just as an example. No? Right. You know, your, your wife is, uh, is from the Madrigal family. Yes. Oh. Paano, paano kayo umaapak sa lupa? I mean, you know. I... You know, we've been fortunate because my parents also led separate lives. I mean, I mean in, in, they were together, mm -hmm. but they led. You can do what you like in mm -hmm. your area. And mm -hmm. that's also how we, we operate. No? Mm -hmm. So... so you know, so what are her pursuits? Well, she's in the foundation. Mm -hmm. She's a director in several places, including Caritas. Uh, she has some real estate business. So she's quite busy in her own uh, right. Mm -hmm. What I mean is, you know, you both lived a very privileged life. Mm -hmm. uh, your parents are wealthy. So. How do you stay down to earth? Paano kayo umaapak sa lupa? It's all a state of mind. You know, my parents, of course, they were well off. But they taught us to live relatively simple lives. No? And, and, and the same for uh, my wife Ging's parents. No? So in a sense, we, we think, uh, and the good news is others think, that we live fairly simple lives. I mean, you know, of course, we have the usual social, and of course, when we travel, we can go anywhere we want and do anything we want, right? but we spend a lot of time with our family. Mm -hmm. Simple joys. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. If we can go back to banking, what would you consider your legacy? At the time when I left, uh, there was some criticism about bankers worldwide, okay? And so maybe if I'm thinking back, what I can say, which I said also, is that at least during my time, uh, banking has remained a noble profession in the Philippines, diba? And so that, that's, what, that's what made me. Mm -hmm. feel good no? because of course I was influencing it also partly because of BAP and at the time being one of the senior bankers. Mm -hmm. In the education sector, well, um, maybe it's too early, but Correct. what has been your contribution and what would you like to contribute further? Well, I think it's still the student experience because no? as we say, our core uh, academic strength is like online and offline learning, uh, meaningful campus ex student experience, and then helped out by campus sports and culture. As long as, as, long as we can stick to that, uh, that uh, area, uh, it will help. No? Uh, Maybe the other way to say it is that FU will be a respected school in the country. Isn't it? Isn't it already? Yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, it shouldn't go down while I'm around. <laughs> <laughs> go up, pa. 
Whether in banking or in education, it is clear what fuels and inspires Gigi Montinola. It is people, serving them better and helping them grow. Indeed, he has inherited the character and values imparted by his grandfather, who made the betterment of our country and its people his motivation in business and in his short but valiant life. I'm Cesc Oreña Drilon. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Usapang Billionario. I hope it has inspired you to believe, persevere, and most importantly, be brave.